Hi, I'm Amy. Hey, and I'm Crystal, and we're two West End girls. Today we're going to be making some raw icing and working on putting together gingerbread houses. We're going to give you a basic recipe and walk through the steps of cutting out, or mixing, cutting out, and making your own gingerbread house for the holidays. Stay with us. Alright, for mixing your gingerbread dough, you're going to need one cup of shortening, one cup of sugar, one and a quarter cups of molasses, and two eggs for your wet mix. And we'll mix this together first, making sure to scrape down our bowl a few times, and then we'll add in our dry ingredients, which I'll show you in just a moment. So I've put in the shortening, I'm gonna add the sugar, I'm gonna add my two eggs. So all the wet ingredients are in the bowl, I'm going to mix. Let's start off on low. And you want to cream together that sugar and egg mixture, the shortening, and the molasses. Make sure to stop probably two or three times in the mixing of the wet ingredients and scrape down the sides of your bowl. Take all that molasses down and make sure all the shortening and sugar is mixing in well. Okay. Scrape all the way down at the bottom, all those wet ingredients up, make sure there's no lumps of sugar. Alright, so we have our wet ingredients mixed. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our dry ingredients. We're going to need five and a half cups of flour, and to that we're going to add one teaspoon of baking soda. We're going to add one tablespoon of fresh ginger after the baking soda, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one quarter teaspoon of cloves. One quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. So now we're going to use a whisk and we're going to mix together those dry ingredients, try to get all those spices and the baking soda mixed in with the flour. That helps with our leavening and helps to make an even looking gingerbread. So whisk and whisk until you get those spices throughout and the baking soda and the leavening throughout. And then we're going to add this dry mix to our wet mix slowly. You can add it cup by cup. I would recommend it taking maybe a cup at a time. And remember that you're going to scrape down your bowl a few times too. So I'm going to put one cup in. So let's start on low. Put that mix in. Scrape the bowl after each addition of flour. It helps to get everything nice and well mixed. It helps to prevent those ribbons of molasses, which I sometimes have in my houses because I don't take enough time and I'm not patient enough to get all that mixed really well. So it is good to go back and uh, scrape down your bowl after each addition of flour. The wet ingredients can be mixed with a small hand mixer and then you can slowly um, get a wooden spoon and then add in um, the cup at a time of the dry mixed ingredients too if you don't have a larger mixer which is not everyone does and I understand that so just get a wooden spoon out and you're probably going to have to do it put, a, put your hands in there and get your hands dirty and may even need to hand mix and knead to get your gingerbread fully mixed but it's something fun that you can do with your family just have a prepared place before you begin to and just be ready for a little bit of flour here and there to clean up after. Alright, so my gingerbread is pretty much mixed now, so I'm going to transfer it over to a Ziploc bag. From there, I will put it in the refrigerator to chill for at least two to three hours. If you don't have a lot of time, that will be fine. Then you can use it for rolling if you uh, want to leave it overnight, or it can last even for a week or two weeks in the refrigerator and be just fine for rolling out whenever you're ready. So I've got my gingerbread all in the bag now, and I'm going to chill it for a couple hours, and it'll be ready to use.